She's very glamorous and she's breathtakingly beautiful. And I'd like to welcome her to the stage, Batia Offa. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. What an introduction. But you know, you really didn't have to. My children already have all of your books. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I hope you're all having a wonderful time underneath this breathtaking installation. It's almost hard to believe we're in the middle of London, in the middle of autumn. I'm thrilled to be standing here at the Royal Horticultural Halls. As some of you might remember, our last Art of Wishes Gala took place at the Dorchester. However, since neither flogging or stoning is quite on point with our brand identity, we thought a change of venue was wise. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. It means so much to me to make a wish and ultimately to the make a wish children. When young children are sick, it is all consuming for them and their families. Life becomes a carousel of hospital appointments and painful treatments. Their condition becomes defining. Whereas once they might have been the kid who loves football or the kid who loves unicorns, they now become the sick child, the child in hospital, the child with cancer. All the works you see here on display this evening are connected to these children's stories. During my work with Make-A-Wish over the years, I've been fortunate enough to meet many of these children. I've met some really incredible children and I've heard some really powerful stories. I could spend all evening telling them to you, but don't worry, I won't. We have an auction to run. However, there is one particular story that I would like to share with you all tonight. Some of you were already privileged enough to meet him at the last Art of Wishes lunch. And this is the story of Eunice. Eunice was 12 years old when he was diagnosed with a rare kind of cancer. When we came to see him, he said his wish was to go on a trip to New York with his mother. Unfortunately, he was too sick at the time, and the doctor said that the trip should be postponed. While lying in hospital and receiving treatment, he saw a documentary about Africa and about how people had to walk for miles and miles from the village in order to just get water. Eunice decided to call us back, and when we came to see him, he said, hopefully, one day I will get better and I will travel to New York, but today, I would like to build a water well in Africa. We didn't just give Eunice the money, we embarked on a full fundraising project with him, at the end of which enough money was raised to build three water wells. And eventually, Eunice got better. But he did not go to New York. He traveled to Gambia, to the villages where the wells were built. Eunice was no longer the sick child. He was the child who was treated like a hero when he traveled to Gambia. So granting a wish for a sick child is this powerful. It gives them back their identity, their stolen childhood. And in some cases, such as Eunice's, an identity they might have not even thought was possible. All the money raised here this evening will go towards fulfilling such wishes. But what is even more important, and I know many of you heard me saying it over and over, but it is really important. What is more important that fulfilling a wish for a sick child can improve their medical prognosis 
and this has been proven by research. Some oncologists who have seen the power of the wish will now include it as part of the medical treatment. Telling the Make-A-Wish people exactly when is the right moment to come in, meet the child, and give them the hope and optimism they so much need. I can't think of any better proof that fulfilling a wish for a sick child can actually change their life. However, sadly, the demand for these wishes is higher than ever. Just in July and August, in the last two months of the summer, we've had over 600 referrals in the UK alone. That is 600 new sick children that are waiting for the wish to be fulfilled. All of us here, thankfully, are in a position to be able to help. In our last Art of Wishes Gala, we raised enough money to fulfill over 700 wishes, which was an incredible amount. Tonight, well, hopefully with your help, we could even supersede that. <clears throat> Putting on an event like this takes an army, and I have a few people I would like to thank. First of all, to my Art of Wishes committee, who are all over this room. I wouldn't be able to do it without you. Each and every one of you brings something unique to the table. Thanks to each and every one of you for your hard work and dedication. To Cheyenne Westfell, my dear friend, Thank you for hosting the Art of Wishes preview. What a wonderful event it has been. Jennifer Stankham, what a beautiful installation she lent us for this evening. It's hard not to be inspired to give when you hear the Make-A-Wish stories, but tonight we really have some extraordinary prizes whether you look at the live, silent, or special art auctions, I urge you to look at all of them. I'm really grateful to each and every prize donor. Simone de Paris will soon be conducting the live auction. Thank you for being our auctioneer. All the works you see on display here this evening have all been donated to Make-A-Wish. Some of the artists and gallerists are here with us this evening. Thank you for your true generosity of heart and spirit. I wouldn't be standing here had it not been for you. Thank you. And I urge everyone, by the way, to bid on the art. I'm telling you there's some really good pieces and no one will be disappointed if they walk home with an art piece. And last but not least, to the Make-A-Wish team, Jason and the office especially Christy, Becky, and Lucy. <laughs> Thank you for going along with all my crazy ideas, for never saying no. Thank you for supporting me. It's a pleasure to work with every single one of you. And now we will watch a short film which will demonstrate how impactful fulfilling a wish for a sick child can be. I warn you, it is a difficult watch, so just think how difficult it must have been to live. As you can see, a wish, however big or small, does make a difference. It gives children and their families a small moment of joy in the depths of despair. A little light in the darkest of times. Make-A-Wish families often tell me that these moments is what they hold on to when they grieve, when they cope with the ultimate loss. 
the Make-A-Wish team know how priceless these moments are, which is why every wish is a production. Every detail is considered, and nothing is too big an ask. However, none of this would be possible without the generosity of people such as yourselves. By joining us tonight, you can be part of the team, and you can do so in one of two ways. By either being a successful bidder in the live, silent, or art auction, or by filling the pledge cards on your tables. Please help us give children like Kelsey and their families a little bit of light. Thank you.